Hey everyone, welcome back to your weekly market outlook. This is for the 15th to the 19th of April 2024. My name is Vero Let's get this started with a quick promo code that you can use to double your deposit bonus. It's Vero MA24, valid until the 31st of December 2024. All right, let's get started on to what's been going on last week. Obviously, we have central bank decisions coming up from the RBNZ, Bank of Canada, the ECB, all three of them, you know, didn't change their interest rates. Uh, but we do have comments coming out from the um, the ECB there in terms of solidifying that they will probably cut rates in June 2024 uh, whether or not it, it matters in terms of diverging away from the FOMC which is right now not expected to cut rates in 2024 because of the higher than expected CPI number that was released last week uh, we'll talk about that in a minute uh, the ECB basically mentions that they are on a completely different path right now in terms of their inflation levels and obviously they will have to act according to uh, their nation's best interest to not have the economy fall into a recession so that's basically the gist of their uh, comments coming out from the ECB last week. So let's take a look at the US inflation number here. Uh, market was again surprised by the numbers. Uh, it was from 3.2% to 3.5%, uh, higher than what the market is expecting at 3.4%. So it, there, were, there were talks about higher inflation, but not this high at 3.5%. In terms of the monthly growth or the inflation number, uh, we didn't see any changes at all. Market was expecting 0.3% growth. We still got 0.4% growth for the core CPI. We didn't actually see a drop. We actually saw a stable core CPI at 3.8% for uh, the US there. Uh, I think that's really important in addition to the labor numbers that we have, the labor market data uh, from the NFP and the unemployment rate, which is surprisingly good. Uh, we also have a surprisingly good inflation number there. It does point for a, you know, it gives reason for a stronger US dollar from a fundamental perspective to the point that, you know, <laughs> the Bank of Japan is actually not un uh, able to kind of intervene in the Forex market because the fundamental is right. The US dollar is expected to be stronger because the US economy is so good at this point in time. And, you know, considering the notion that the FOMC is expected to cut a lot of rates for the past six months, we have been saying that the FOMC will probably not have to cut rates as quickly as what the market is expecting. We now have the evidence for that. And for now, the June rate cuts, it's probably not going to happen uh, from the FOMC. So that's data from last week. If we take a look at this week, what do we expect? On Monday, we are looking at the US retail sales number. The US retail sales number, we're expecting a slight drop, but the core retail sales number, we're expecting a level to hold uh, kind of increase actually from 0.3% to 0.5%. So I think that would actually have a lot of impact onto the market. You know, obviously market is kind of dissecting any fundamentals coming up from the US, looking for reasons to sell the US dollar. But, uh, you know, that's going to be making the retail sales number of very high impact news uh, for tonight as well. And the other thing to consider as well, uh, what has happened over the weekend uh, in, in terms of the situation in Gaza? Uh, it does intensify. And six months ago, we actually published an outlook on a potential worst case scenario, which is actually Iran coming into the picture here. And that's basically what happened over the weekend. Uh, we are looking at the worst case scenario here. Could this be another reason for a run towards safe haven? You know, and then which safe haven assets is actually going to be the one people are going to uh, go to, right? So that's the discussion for this week's outlook. But in terms of data is coming up from this week, <clears throat> uh, UK employment numbers, obviously that's going to be on Tuesday. Canadian uh, inflation number, which is also going to be on Tuesday. Uh, the U.S. industrial production is also going to be on Tuesday. On Wednesday, we are expecting the New Zealand CPI numbers as well as the U.K. inflation numbers. For the U.K. inflation number, this is going to be a strong focus for a lot of traders. We're expecting an inflation to drop down from 34 to 3.1%. If it does drop lower than what the market is consensus is, then we might actually see a, a, you know, a, a, a much stronger sell-off in the sterling. So just keep that in mind. Uh, that would be on Thursday. Oh, sorry, on Wednesday. And on Thursday, we have the uh, Australian employment numbers. And on Friday, we have <coughs> the UK retail sales numbers. So 
those are the fundamentals for this week. Let's take a look at the technicals here. Let's take a look at the dollar index here. Right now on Monday, we are at 106. This is the same level that we saw uh, that pushed um, that we saw on the dollar index here. So the US dollar is actually going a lot stronger. We have surpassed that 103, 105 level. We are right now beyond that level. We are at 106. So 105 is going to be our immediate support for the dollar index. Uh, we do have further projections to the upside, which is a move closer towards the 107 on the dollar index. And considering all the major data that's coming out from the US has already came out, we do have a reason for a stronger US dollar in addition to the current situation that's developing in Gaza. If there's actually a run towards safe haven, the US dollar is actually going to be the one that a lot of traders are gonna go into, not gold. Uh, and you know, probably oil is the other thing that we are probably gonna be taking a look at as well. But in terms of safe havens, the dollar wins in terms of the run there. And I'll explain that in a little bit, bit uh, because we saw a little bit of a movement on gold last Friday. So on Friday last week, the US dollar continued to push higher, hitting 106. Obviously, that's going to be the resistance, but beyond that, we have 107. Now, moving on to the Aussie USD, since the break below 65 cents uh, happened, we have been on high alert there. The resistance remains at 66 to 66.50. That was the previous fair value gap. We have moved that fair value gap because last week we have a much newer fair value gap, which is about half a cent drop. Right now, that fair value gap is located between 65 to six, uh, 65.50 to 66 cents. This is going to be your major resistance for Aussie. Um, Immediate resistance will be at 65 cents. Immediate support will be at 64.50. Potential push lower would be towards 64 cents for the Aussie USD. Uh, Euro USD, similar situation there. We have been warning about the potential collapse on the Euro USD, especially since we lost that sell side liquidity at 1.08 about two weeks ago. Uh, last week, we saw that recovery towards 1.0850, 1.09. We have the resistance trend line that's capping it. Uh, kind of a perfect textbook analysis on the year USD. Here's the resistance trend line. Here's 1.0850, 1.09, which is a key level on the year USD. And we saw a quick sudden drop on the year USD. Obviously, that's on the back of a stronger inflation number coming out from the US. In addition to that, the comments coming out from the ECB that potential life for a June rate cut. This has pushed the year USD last week below the key level of 1.0650, 1.07. We are looking at <clears throat> 1.0650 and 1.07 as the immediate resistance for the year USD. <clears throat> if we take a look at where the weekly pivot is located, it is located at 1.0725. So we expect this level to be the strong resistance for this week at 1.07 to 1.0725. We expect this level to potentially fail. If it does fail, we expect a lot more sellers to come into the market. And this could push the euro lower uh, towards 1.05 to 1.0550, where we have another block there in terms of order blocks, which is at about 1.05, which is a key psychological level for <coughs> the euro USD. Um, but obviously, whether or not price is actually going to retrace towards 1.07 or break towards, uh, continue to move towards 1.05 really depends on whether 1.06 is able to hold the euro USD in the next few days. If it does, uh, we might see a little bit of profit taking at 1.06. We might see a little bit of retracement towards 1.07. If it doesn't hold, if the market just kind of slices through 1.06, then yeah. We expect for the drop towards 1.05 for the year USD at this point in time. All right, moving on to the pound USD, we have also lost that key order block, uh, key support level, which is located at 1.25 and 1.2550 last Friday, right? So we saw a, a clean cut on the pound USD at this point in time, breaking below that 1.25 key psychological support level. We do have a little bit of an immediate support level at 1.2450 where Price is currently finding a little bit of support, but ultimately we are looking at a potential push lower towards 1.23, 1.2350. Take a look at where the pivot is located. The pivot is located between the, uh, the previous order block, uh, so it's actually located at 1.2525. So we do expect resistance to come in at 1.25, 1.2525 to 1.2550. Again, similar scenario with the Euro USD here. If we see failures at this level, then we expect most sellers to come into the market to push sterling down. And in addition, to that 
if the inflation does drop in the UK on Wednesday, then yeah, we do expect further selling to happen because the Bank of England would then have to agree that they might have to take the divergence that happens and join the ECB in terms of cutting interest rates before the FOMC uh, and probably in June or July for the Bank of England. All right, moving on next is the dollar Japanese yen. Obviously, we saw that run towards safe haven on Monday, and this is the reason why we're probably going to be looking at the U.S. dollar as a little bit of a stronger safe haven run. The dollar Japanese yen is now at about 15375 at time of recording. So uh, with what we've been talking about the dollar Japanese yen, we don't expect intervention to happen at 152, uh, and there are a lot of factors to consider as well. Number one, whatever happened with the dollar Japanese is actually fundamentally driven. So this is not, uh, it doesn't fit into the criteria where uh, the Ministry of Finance is saying, oh, you know, we need the fundamentals for the market. We don't want exaggerated movement in the market, blah, blah, blah. But uh, in terms of the fundamentals, it's very hard for the Ministry of Finance to justify an intervention because the fundamentals from the U.S. is just so strong. The inflation number is high. The employment numbers are good. So fundamentally, this is the right movement. And we saw this happen. And we are now beyond 153. And we haven't yet seen an intervention. Market is still not jittery as well, especially considering the current situation that um, the Iran has come into the picture with in the whole Gaza situation there. Uh, we might see this push up a little bit higher. We do see 54, 154 and 155 as a little bit more of a profit-taking level. We might see those levels acting as a little bit of a resistance. But regardless of the matter here, fundamentally, it is very hard for the Ministry of Finance in Japan to actually intervene into the market without getting criticized by the world at this point in time. It's not just Japan that is weak against the US dollar. It's pretty much every other currency in the Asian market as well. So... Uh, the USR is just strong against pretty much everything at this point in time. So for the dollar Japanese, this is uh, still a strong uptrend that we're looking at here. Uh, immediate support is located at 152, obviously the previous key resistance. 152, we have 151, we have 150 to hold the dollar Japanese. Yeah, and those three levels are probably going to be a, a buy on the dip situation for a lot of carry traders. So just keep that in mind for the dollar Japanese. Yeah. All right, next up is gold. And for gold, we have been cautioning that gold is uh, a very risky asset because we do not know the limit. We can estimate the limit at about uh, 2350 and then beyond that 2400. We saw what happened on Friday. We saw market spiking up 2400. Uh, it actually went a little bit higher, 2430, in fact. Uh, and then we saw a very quick sell off uh, pretty much towards the end of Friday. Uh, last week and that sell-off gave a strong indication that a lot of traders are actually jittery about the current situation with gold in terms of how far it can push we saw that level 2400 as a profit taking level to happen right now price is hovering about 2350 obviously the resistance that we now have is going to be 2400 in terms of support we're going to have 2300 below 2300 we, if we do break back below 2300 then yeah, we expect price to push down lower towards 2200. But the movement that happened here on Monday morning does point out to one thing. The run to safe haven as the situation gets worse, it's not towards gold at this point in time because gold is such a high level. Uh, there's actually a lot of scare. Uh, there's actually a lot of concern here that if we buy gold at this point, where is our stop loss going to be? Because the nearest stop loss, the, the most logical stop loss is going to be located at about 2300. And then below that, it's going to be at 2200. It is a lot of risk to take. And I think all traders are starting to figure that out uh, right now. And for, you know, should the situation intensifies, it's very hard for gold to be that safe haven asset. Considering that last week's data points to a no cut for the, from the FOMC in June, that's already a negative for gold. Um, and we take a look at the current situation on Monday, we saw the US dollar gaining much more than gold uh, as the market opens to the news that happened over the weekend. So just keep that in mind if you're trading gold. Now, lastly, I do want to bring out uh, oil. We haven't been discussing oil for uh, a while now. Uh, about six months ago, I do publish a publication there um, on oil there. And we are at about the current price level during the publication, which was about six months ago. Six months ago, oil was at about 84, 85 level as well. 
Now, the worst case scenario is if the situation intensifies and if Iran is directly involved and upfront being about their involvement, I could push oil prices up beyond $90. We're looking at further projections uh, beyond $90, so it's $92, $95, and then potentially even $100 for oil there. Right now, as Monday opens, price did not actually gap up. Now, this could mean a few things. Uh, the current price level could not be, maybe it's not attractive for a lot of traders. Um, so yeah, uh, in terms of whether or not the situation is actually going to intensify, a lot of traders are kind of like in the sideline right now thinking, could it get worse? Uh, if, if it does get worse, should we be buying oil at the current price level or should we wait a little bit? Maybe we could get it at a lower price. And I think that would be the scenario that actually plays out. From a technical standpoint, uh, the oil prices right now, it's kind of a little bit too high. Right, we do have that support at eighty-five dollars. So price might not go below eighty-five. So, <clears throat> um, oil traders are seen collecting positions at eighty-five, but they're actually more prepared to pick a lot more if price goes to eighty-four dollars or potentially eighty-three. Those are going to be the key support level for oil, and that's where a lot more buyers are probably going to come in. So, uh, if you are thinking of getting into oil if you think of buying oil uh, make sure you have a very hard stop loss at eighty dollars or seventy nine dollars because any move below eighty dollars would actually see oil prices drop significantly to the downside obviously the current risk is that should this situation intensify we should potentially see a much higher gain on oil prices because iran um is a larger oil producer as well and in terms of oil transport it does has to pass through iran about 20 percent of oil in the world has to pass through iran uh, or the strait of homeless to you know get transported so i think that's the basically the main concern here with oil prices so for now uh, a couple of options here you might want to start collecting 85 if you think that uh, you might actually miss out on this one uh, otherwise, you know, a lot more traders are actually looking at 84, 83 before picking oil up. The other scenario is if it does surpass 87, then we expect more run to uh, happen very quickly to the upside towards 89, potentially $90. So we, we do have a couple of scenarios here that could play out. And oil prices right now is very stable. Uh, as of Monday, we don't actually see a huge gap to the upside. It does provide us with a lot of time to think about the current condition as well and whether or not we should actually take a position into oil but should the situation intensify oil will be the assets to look into because this will be directly impacted unlike gold all right so with that good luck to your trades and i'll see you soon